Hey, how are you doing? In the last segment, uh, we uh, centered the, uh, the four draw chuck, uh, our work piece, so it was nice and square and straight and centered. Uh, we're going to continue with that and actually use it to demonstrate the next product, which is uh, the radius cutter, part number 2200. This is somewhat of a complex, uh, uh, complicated uh, uh, accessory for, uh, for our machines, um, but let's open it up and go through all the parts and I'll explain what each part is and what it's for. Uh, first and foremost we have your tool bit. The tool bit that comes with the tool is a, a quarter inch square uh, brazed carbide 60 degree um, cutter and I'll, and I'll explain that more why we use the 60 degree cutter when we start setting up the part and two quarter inch dowel pins that have been sharpened to a 60 degree point. You'll see why shortly. Then we have the two end pieces. These are your support mounts. Handy dandy Allen wrench and your actual tool piece. And of course your instructions which I highly, highly recommend you at least read through them uh, a couple of times to familiarize yourself uh, with the processes and procedures of first time setups and, and why things are done the way they're done, which I will demonstrate in the video. And now we're going to start mounting uh, the various pieces uh, on the cross slide. The first piece, and there's a very specific order of operations that you do this with. You'll notice a step here on the back, bottom side of the first, uh, the first uh, support mount. And you can see how that goes here. We have the, the step, and you want the, the undercut on the bottom to be against the front edge of the cross slide. And what I do is I just line it up flush with the back or the front edge of the cross slide and snug it down. And do the same with the other one. And just snug it down flush with that edge to start with. Then you take each one of the pins and just slide the pin into the hole. And this will in turn allow you to um, seat the, the, tool, the tool arm itself. Now, there's a number of different holes on here. Um, I usually just pick the middle hole halfway down the, the length of this. You pull, put pressure. You make sure they're seated in the in the tapered holes and put pressure on them kind of centering the tool post between the two arms and tighten them down make sure they are snug so it doesn't come loose on you and this allows you to rotate the radius cutter now then we uh, take the tool bit <coughs> Now, there's a very specific orientation for the tool bit. It has to be with the cutting face away from you. So when you put it in, and just snug it down to start with. Now what we have to do here is we have to set the depth of the tool bit in reference to the workpiece. And the way you do that is you roll it forward. You want to loosen your, your tool bit up so you can move it. Kind of hold it so it doesn't drop on you. And this also will allow you to center the face of your tool bit on your workpiece. Uh, we'll, we'll get a little closer view of that uh, in another view, so hang tight. So what I do is I just kind of eyeball the top edge of the cutter to the center line of your part. 
hold the tool cutter or the tool holder vertical pushing down on your tool bit to lock it in place. Now this sets your radius reference. Keep it vertical and walk it away from your part. Now your radius is set to cut, um, let's see, 5 eighths would be a, a 5 sixteenths radius. Okay, now that everything is set and ready to go, we're slowly going to walk it in as it's running and just rotate back and forth very slowly and walk the carriage forward into the cut and it'll start forming the radius and you'll see it basically materialize as it starts cutting. And you can see the radius starting to form. I'm just roughing it, going kind of quick on my cuts. And when you get, when the tool bit gets closer to the point, you start slowing down your cuts to giving, uh, to give a nice, even, smooth finish. This does take a steady hand and you really have to hang on to the tool itself uh, otherwise you can chip and damage the actual cutting tip. And you advance it just a couple of thou on each pass. Again, it's, it's a learned feel thing as to how aggressive you can be. Now with a softer metal like aluminum or brass, you can be more aggressive than you can with steel or stainless steel or any of the more exotic materials. Okay, we're starting to get pretty close to the, the end of the cut. I'm going to increase the RPM just a little bit. And there we go. We have a nice 180 degree uh, ball nose radius on the end of our workpiece. And the next segment will be cutting a concave cut on the end of your workpiece. Okay, now that the, the, the convex uh, radius has been cut, uh, we're going to do the concave uh, cut now. I've switched to the three jaw self-centering chuck just to make life a little bit easier. And chuck up the piece and lock it down real well. And with the radius cutter, we essentially have to reverse the setup. The tool bit has to get reversed because we're not cutting this way anymore. We're starting at the top and cutting down this time because the tool bit is sweeping in from the bottom and cutting up into the center of the part rather than over the top. And that requires us to flip the tool bit 180 degrees in the tool holder because we're cutting from the bottom, not the top. We have to keep the, tool, the rotation direction correct on the tool bit. So we just take the tool bit out. Uh, to do this kind of cut, I changed from the carbide 60 degree cutter to the high speed steel left hand turning tool. Now you have to put the tool in instead of with the, the cutting face away from you, you have to have the cutting face toward you 
because you're cutting on the opposite side of the part. Instead of coming from here over the part, you're starting here and going into the part. Uh, we're cutting from the bottom so the direction changes. We have to change the tool bit. Also, when you're cutting the uh, concave, uh, your center line is extraordinarily critical that you get it very close, if not flawlessly, on center. It's best to be off a little bit and not over center. If you're over center, you'll damage the tool, so it's, it's best to walk in, into the center rather than try to eyeball it dead on and, and be over center. And you'll see why when I start cutting. I'll actually back it away a little bit to show you it'll leave a little center, center punch in the center of the part. And with cutting like this, you will want to use both hands because it can get away from you rather easily, especially when you first start. just slowly walking in and you can see, I'll back it away here, you can see it's leaving a center mark. So we'll have to pull the cross slide back a little bit, just a little bit at a time, so we can pick up that, that center mark and get rid of it. This is a again a learned process. It'll be you'll you'll go back and forth quite a bit until you get the actual hang of this. And each metal will cut differently. Cutting metal by hand is a very steady hand because it will want to pull it right out of your fingers. Just like that. And there is your internal radius cut. Just like that. And that's that.